Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Tuesday evening of studying what the Bible says. And tonight, we're going to be studying about what the Bible says about creation versus evolution. And our speaker, our pre uh, presenter tonight is none other than Brother David Solis. So shall we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for being with us this evening, and we thank you, Lord, for the song, and we thank you for your word, dear God. And so tonight, we invite you to give us more understanding so that we will be um, uh, knowledgeable enough to share what you have shared with us in and through your word to others as we reach to win new friends for you. Bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the time is yours, Brother David. Thank you. Uh, can I share now? Yes, I can. Okay. All right. Can you guys see that? Yes. Yes. All right. Just want to make sure everybody can see that. Okay. So, um... A little synopsis. Uh, this is, as you can see in the title, the second part uh, of, of, of what we are going to be talking about, which is uh, evolution, creation, and, and, and the Bible. And, and I call this one the Big Bang creation and, the, and God's glory part two. Um, if you guys remember yesterday, one of the main points that we were talking about was how deception can can enter into the mind without us even knowing it. And, and it's just very crafty how words can be manipulated words can be uh changed the meaning can be changed the context can be changed and it, it gives you a completely different idea of what it is uh so let me pray once again uh i i i am a human and i do expect the holy spirit to help me out with this i don't pretend to be an expert and or that i know everything about this topic but uh i expect the holy spirit to guide my thought in my words so let's uh have one more word of prayer if you if you guys uh join me please bless the father thank you so much for your kindness uh thank you for bringing me home on time uh traffic was uh pretty heavy but i made it and i, I am ready uh please the main thing we ask for is for the endowment of the holy spirit that whatever we talk about here, whatever we do here, whatever is presented that is under the influence and the guidance of your spirit. Uh, second of all, that everything we do will give you glory, that everything we talk about will uplift your name. And uh, third of all, that all these things may give us hope as Christians, that there is a God that is merciful, that is a God that is loving, there is a God that is creator. And we will be talking about this today. So please be with my mouth. Um, if I have any sins, if I have any iniqui iniquities, any transgressions, Lord, I beg you that you wash me clean, that you sprinkling, sprinkle me with the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, and that through the sanctification of the Spirit, the, the Holy Spirit, that I may obediently follow what you want me to say today. So I ask this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. All right. So let me begin with this. When the disciples were asking Jesus for the signs of his second coming, the first thing that came out of Jesus' mouth was deception. Beware that you not be deceived, okay? Now, there are deceptions by the millions, and this is just one of those that is in the pot and, and causes a lot of confusion uh, and, and, and breaks down our faith and and complete, uh, completely disregard what the Bible says. So today, I'm going to attempt to unravel some of these things that evolution teaches so that you can see and you can spot this little thing. So when Jesus said that there will be deceptions, the first thing that came to my mind with that is how does Satan introduce sin into the world? So it brings him back into Genesis. And in Genesis, we have the story of Adam and Eve. And what did Satan do to deceive uh eve to take of the fruit he manipulated the words he turned them around he gave them a different context he said something that was not truthful which awoken something in her and got her to uh bite on the bait if you like uh and if you see a little head on the side that's my son sabby <laughs> he likes to show off there 
so uh, with that said, I'm going to give you the quote that I got from the first presentation so that we can go with that. Uh, and, and before we do that, let me tell you that this, the question, um, the last presentation I did, there was two questions. The first question is how? Evolution asks the question, how did we become what we are? What created the how and the what? And this second part is the why. Why did it happen? Okay, so let me begin with this quote, which is very, very crucial and important. Since the book of nature and the book of Revelation bear the impress of the same master mind, they cannot but speak in harmony. Okay, so you're looking at the book of Revelation, which would be the Bible, and then you're looking at uh, uh, nature itself, and both of them are in harmony with each other. They will not contradict each other. Okay, now I'll keep going with the quote. By different methods and in different languages, they witness to the same great truth. Science is ever discovering new wonders, but she brings from her research nothing that rightly understood conflicts with divine revelation. Amen? Now, the book of nature and the written word shed light upon each other. They make us acquainted with God by teaching us something of the laws through which he works. All right, so when I first presented this on the first, pre pre first presentation, we dialogued about that if something in there that conflicts, if there's something that doesn't quite uh, match, then there's something wrong with the information, there's something wrong with the method, there's something wrong with the, wrong with the research. But eventually, the, the word that I'm going to be presenting to you is that if it doesn't match, if there's a disconnect, then it means that it's a lie. Okay. And we're going to talk about that in, in, in a bit as, as we develop the, 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 the talk. All right. So now let us look at the why God created. Okay. We're going to expound. And just like I did in the first presentation, I'm going to use the science. I'm going to use the evolution and I'm going to present that to you. And then I'm going to reverse it and see how evolution and some of you that didn't hear this the last time that you were here, evolution is actually true. And I said that the last time and I said, please don't stone me. Wait, wait till I explain so you can know what I mean. OK, so let's begin for that. We need to look at evolution. OK, we're going to dive a little bit into what evolution is, uh, how it's explained, not too deep, but just the most basic parts of evolution. So we have an understanding of, of what it, what it is. What it's trying to say, what it's trying to teach, okay? Evolution, the process by which different kinds of living organisms are thought to have developed and diversified from earlier forms during the history of the earth, okay? So this is a very compact uh, definition of what evolution is, and is uh, organisms that develop and that diversified through time. And if you remember what, what we, we spoke in, uh, in the last presentation, Evolution, what it does, it takes away God and puts time as God. So evolution is not only a lie, but it's also uh, uh, a system of idolatry because you're no longer worshiping God, but you're worshiping time. As long as you put time into the equation, then anything can happen. Anything is possible. So time becomes God. He's the ultimate equalizer. With enough time, anything can happen. Okay, in biology, evolution is the change in the characteristics of a species over several generations and relies on the process of natural selection. So we're going to unpack all this stuff, natural selection, the processes and all that stuff. And it's going to be uh, pretty, pretty uh, at the beginning. It's going to sound a little confusing, but I will explain as we go. Okay. What is natural selection? Let's unpack natural selection, all right? So Charles Darwin's theory of evolution states that evolution happens by natural selection, okay? Individuals with characteristics best suited to their environment are more likely to survive. Finding food, avoiding predators, and resisting disease, these individuals are more likely to, repro to pro reproduce and pass their genes on to their children. So basically what they're saying is there's David and David is in a very hostile world. 
there's all kinds of animals coming after me. There's diseases coming after me. There's environmental issues coming after me. There's earthquakes. There's uh, plagues. There's storms. There's a volcano. It's a very hostile world. But David has to survive through all of that. So what does he do? He gets exposed to this violent world, whether it be an animal, whether it be a disease or, or, or a, a tornado or whatnot. And if I was able to survive whatever was attacking me or trying to destroy me, then something develops in my genes that gives me an advantage over the other ones. So if I'm able to run away from a, from a T-Rex and he wasn't able to catch me, then my genes all of a sudden starts changing and I become faster. So because I'm faster, now other animals can catch, to, can catch up to me, can't eat me, and I have a better chance of passing that DNA, that trait, to my offsprings, and then they're born with that trait, and they could now run, and they keep passing it through their offsprings, and then they develop something else, and then develop something else, and they develop something else, and they keep getting stronger and stronger. So whoever can develop those traits, those abilities faster, is the one that ends up in the top, and is the one that conquers everything else. Does, make, does that make sense? I hope it does. I know you guys got to be muted. All right. As a consequence, those individuals most suited to their environment survive. And given enough time, the species will gradually evolve. Okay. So the key word in this one is time. Remember, with evolution, time is everything. If you give an insane amount of time, like billions and trillions and, uh, and Googles of, 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 of millenniums, then yeah, it's, it's possible. Yeah, I, I, I didn't see it. I, I don't know what happened, but because there's so much time behind me, it's possible that that cell actually grew an arm. And that's that's the mindset, okay? Now, evolution relies on the, their uh, being genetic variations. And this is very important. This is where it starts getting really tricky how they present this, okay? Genetic variation in a population which affects the physical characteristics, phenotype, of an organism. So as long as there's data, uh, this is a book, okay? Uh, in this book, there's data. All this data is, we could call it the DNA. And it's then in this DNA, it has everything that I need so that I can become me. So there has to be a genetic variation. There has to be a large pool of genetic material. And with like this, this book would not be enough. The genetic material information that needs to be here would have to be huge in order for me to be able to survive in all these things. And we find that in the DNA. OK, that is the book that we're going to be talking about. You know how in the beginning I talked about the, the, the book of Revelation and the book of nature. Today we're going to talk about the book of DNA. And in DNA, there's a huge amount of information that makes me. Now, evolution teaches that that information keeps growing. And it keeps growing and it has to mutate so that I can become something better or at least my offspring can become something better and I can be, go higher and higher in the, in, in, in the chain of life, okay? Some of these characteristics may, be, uh, may give the individual an advantage over other individuals which they can then pass on to their offspring. So we talk about that, right? So if I'm working out and I get buffed up, and I start putting testosterone and protein and all these things, and I get huge, are other humans going to mess with me? More likely not, because just the intimidation, they look at me, I'm like a seven foot tall, and I'm 300 pounds of muscle. Nobody's going to come on uh, come on to me. Nobody's going to mess with me because I am better than they at, at that moment, right? So that GNA now is incorporated in into my gene pool and it passes down through my offsprings and then my kids grow up with those genes and they come out buff and all that. So they become the, the top of the line in humanity, okay? And that's that's the ideology, that's the idea. So let us break this idea down again, okay? We're gonna make it a little more, uh, uh, break it down even further, all right? So number one, all species related and change, are related and change over time. This is a problem. And this is a word that I want you to stick with right now, okay? Species. We're going to talk about species. It's an extremely important word that you have to know as we go on, okay? All species are related and changed over time. So a saying that all species, keep that in mind because we're going to come back, are related. That's not true, all right? 
Number two, genetic variations. We know about genetic variations. We have genetic variations in the world because we have dogs, we have birds, we have fish, we have humans, we have uh, lizards, we have snakes. That's a large variation of, of information in DNA. But according to the first uh, point that we're making, these are all related. That's where we come into a problem, okay? Number three, these variations give advantages and, and is passed down to the offspring, okay? Again, tricky if you know what you're talking about. Yes, we as humans, do we pass our genetic DNA, our, 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 our information to our offsprings? Yes or no? Yes, we do. Does a snake pass its, uh, uh, the information to another snake? Yes, it does. But the problem is, are they interchangeable with other species? That's where we're, we're going to talk about it in a little bit, all right? So remember that all these things take place in a billions of years scenario. So if you, la you add billions of years, yeah, okay, maybe it's possible that a snake can turn into a bird. I can see it, but because there's so much time along the way, that is, there's a slight possibility that maybe, yeah, maybe it could happen if you give it enough time, right? All right, so uh, let me tell, so this is what the point I, I, wanna, I wanna bring up. Let me tell you, like I did in the first one, all this is true to a certain degree. The problem is that they're manipulating the words, they're changing the ideology, they're giving different definition to the words, and that's where we get into trouble. Uh, the deception can be right in front of you. Deception can be like an Eve that deception was right in front of her, but because the words were manipulated, they were giving a different meaning or something was added to it, then it becomes harder to, the, to decipher or to see the lie, okay? Now, the problem is that they are adding to the text. Remember, there's a verse in the Bible that says, uh, uh, if they don't speak according to this word, it is because there is no truth, uh, no truth in them. Okay, so what did Satan do? He added to God's word. God said, "Do not eat of this tree." What did Satan see? say? Did God say, "Don't eat of those trees"? So he starts to manipulate the words. He starts to change the meanings. He starts to change the context, and that's when we get into trouble. And evolution does exactly the same thing. It's a masterpiece of deception. Okay, so they add to the to the text things that are not there. And in this context, the text is a DNA. That information they're trying to add something that is can't possibly be added into the DNA. Now, let's go to Proverbs thirty-five and six. And I think this is a, the verse that I was talking to you about. Proverbs 30, 5 and 6. I'm going to give you a few seconds. I do like people to look at their Bible. I'm not just going to give you the verse. Please check on me. And it's too bad that I can't hear you guys. So we're going to Proverbs 30, verses 5 and 6. All right. And it says... Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. And this is the one I, what I'm talking about. Look at this. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found the what? Thou be found the liar. So you could potentially have the right research. You could have the right words. But if you add to that, then it conflicts. This is why I brought the first uh, quote from Ellen G. White. If it conflicts with the word of God, then there's something wrong and that wrong becomes a lie. And if it's a lie, then you can't listen to it because it's going to bring destruction. OK, now, number one, species are related and change over time. Let's go a little bit on, on this definition. A class of individuals having some common characteristics or qualities, distinct sort or kind. OK, again. Let me see if I could put my mouse in here. Oh, you can't see my mouse there. Okay, look at number one. The first word I want you to pay attention, very good attention, put it into your mind. It says species. The definition uses the word kind. They're two separate words, but if you don't use them correctly, it will cause a ton of confusion. And I'm going to show you this, how this works, where it just, if you take one word, if you manipulate one word in the word of God, everything else falls apart. It will not work. So it has to be pure. And I'm going to show you how that works in this, in this uh, uh, presentation. All right. So keep in mind species and kinds. Genesis 121. All right. 
Let's go to Genesis 121. Lucas, let me see you. Look at your Bible. You're the only one I can see. <laughs> How are you, brother? <laughs> when I see you open your Bible, then I'll go. <laughs> You got it? All right, here we go. Genesis 121. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every wing of fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was what? That it was good. Now keep in mind, I want you to keep those two words, species and kind. They don't mean the same thing. You think they could be interchangeable. You think that they might mean the same thing, but they don't. And I'm going to I'm going to show you that. And this is where you're going to get a little confusing, maybe. All right. Listen to this. This is a, a, a something that you really need to pay attention. In scientific terms, a species refers to a specific group of organisms that can be interbred breed and produce fertile offspring at the same time. A kind is a broader category, often used in a more philosophical or religious context. See how they, they put that in the definition? You have the species and you have the kind. Kind is actually a religious term, all right? Encompassing a wider range of related organisms that, that may include several different species. There, there it is right there. Essentially signifying a larger grouping with the ability to reproduce within that group even if not always between every individual species within it. Essentially, a kind is a more general classification than a species, which is more of a precise category. I want to give you an example, but I'm going to give you an example uh, later anyway. So it's coming in a bit, all right? So key points to remember, species, a well-defined group of organisms that can interbreed naturally and produce fertile offsprings is considered the basic unit of classification in biology. That's your species, that definition of species, okay? Does that sound like kind? Lucas, what do you think? Does that sound like kind? It sounds like it, but it's not exact. Exactly, yeah. So you could be tricked to make you think that it is, all right? So let me give you uh, the kind uh, definition. A broader category, a category is often used in non-scientific context. It represents a group of related organisms that may include multiple species, emphasizing their ability to reproduce within that broader group. Okay, I need to give you an example in case you're not getting this, all right? What is this right here? And I'm sure everybody's saying a dog, right? <laughs> Doggy. All right, so this is this is an example, all right? Species, Canis lupus familiaris, a domestic dog. That's a species, all right? That's the example. Then you have kind. Kind is a canine, including wolves, coyotes, foxes, and domestic dogs. So the kind is everything that is related that represents a dog. A species is the type of dog, for example, a husky, but he's still a dog. The problem that evolution has is that they get rid of the kind and they, they named everything as a species. And this is where we came in in the beginning. They says that all species are related. And that's where they get into trouble because they, they think that they, they can all uh, uh, combine, they can all meet up, they can all breed because they're all from the same species. So that's where the definition gets a little blurry. Does that make sense? Let me give you a shoe. You have the kind, it's a shoe, but then you have species. You have football cliques, you have soccer cliques, you have volleyball uh, uh, tennis shoes, you have uh, jogging shoes. Those are the species, but they're from the same kind, and that kind is the shoe. So you have the same thing with dogs, you have the same, same, the same thing with birds, and more importantly, you have the same thing with humans. Humans are a kind that can bring out different variations of itself. 
We can be short, we can be tall, we can be chubby, we can have green eyes, we can have blue eyes, we could be dark skin, we can be light skin, we can have big noses like mine, we can have big ears or we can have small ears. We Some of us grow beer, some of us don't grow beer, but we're still the same kind. We're not all of a sudden because I can grow beer and my brother can, we're completely different things. Oh, he's no longer a human, he's a subhuman now because he can't grow a beer. So this is where they get into trouble. Does that make sense? All right, so now question, are there different species of whales? Yes, but they're still whales. They're still whales. You have all kinds of different types of whales from small and big and large and, and some eat meat, some don't eat meat, some are very uh, uh, docile, some are very aggressive, but, you, but they're still whale. A whale is not gonna breed with a bird and then you're gonna have a half whale bird. It can't do it because it's not the same kind. Okay, do we have different types of, of sharks? Thousands of them, hundreds of different types of sharks, but there's still sharks. A shark cannot breed with an octopus and on the same kind. And this is what, but what the Bible tries to represent. And this is where evolution gets it all mixed up because they believe that they're all just different species from the same cell they, they all came from the same cell okay now this explains part two of evolution generic no, evolution generic variations there are different characteristics of the same type or like the bible says kind different variations different species of the same kind you have different types of bats but they're still bats you have different types of horses but they're still horses you have different types of uh uh, uh dogs but they're still dogs you have different kinds of cats but they're still cats. And one of the things that they use to fight this is how did they put billions of animals in the ark? Again, that's the mindset. But all you needed was one dog, male, and one female dog in the ark. And in that, in that couple of dogs, the whole genetic material that is needed to reproduce the rest of the, piece, the species is there. So Noah or God did not have to go crazy and he had to put every single type of a bat, every single type of dog, every single type of frog. He just needed one kind to go into the ark. And, and in our example, we know that, that there, was a, there was a group. He said, you know, the clean and unclean. There wasn't just one, one couple. He, he, he gave strict instructions so that they can reproduce according to their kind. Okay. So there, there's, there's your explanation of, of how evolution just kind of falls apart. If you know how to look at the wording, the wording is very important. This also explains the passing down or advantages to their offspring. So this is where I told you that it is true. Shark passed their their genetic material, their advantages, they pass it to their offspring, but it stays with their offspring. They don't pass it to a different kind. They don't, the sharks can't pass their, their benefits to me because our DNA does not match. We're not the same kind. We're not the same type. Okay. So, so that's where it kind of falls apart. There is one more thing that evolution relies on and that's natural selection. Okay. And natural selection is very interesting. What is natural selection? Individuals with characteristics best suited to their environment are more likely to survive finding food, avoiding predators, and resisting disease. These individuals are more likely to reproduce and pass their genes on to their children. Okay, we do pass stuff to our children. If I all of a sudden, and I'll use COVID, that'll be perfect. If I all of a sudden become immune to COVID because I was exposed to it, and my genetic makeup uh, finds out how to defeat it, that makeup will be passed down to my kids and they were, are gonna be born with immunity to COVID. So that's how far it, as it extends. But to think that if I was exposed to lava and then my, my hand got burned from the lava and I will survive the rest, all of a sudden I get immune to lava. That's not gonna happen. And then my offsprings are gonna are gonna be born with the skin that can that can, that is immune or or can or can withstand a, a high heat. That's not gonna happen. That it, uh, but evolution kind of teaches that it says as you get stronger and stronger, you you develop certain parts of your body.
body gets stronger or you develop like um, think about it, mutants like the x-men or something now you're growing and you're becoming the superhuman thing which is something that evolution does promote this is why the nazis were 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 uh, killing the, the Jews and, 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 and in their mindset, inferior races. Evolution opens the door for that kind of thinking where we, we're looking for the Uberman. The Uberman is a German one for the, su I think it's oh, Uberman, for uh, the Superman. And if we allow the process to keep continuing, if we get rid of the inferior races, we can become stronger and we can become the superhuman that will rule over everything else. That's the mindset that uh, natural selection opens the door to. So it's very dangerous. It's very violent. There is no, uh, there's no hope. There, there is just about, I'm going to kill you because if I don't kill you, you're going to kill me and I need to be on top. So it's this mindset that is very horrible, very violent, very horrific. Okay. This again, like I just talked about, it's true. Let me show it to you. Genesis 1.26. The passing down of, of genetic makeup, okay? Genesis 1.26. Let me see your Bible, Lucas. <coughs> I'll put you on the spot, bro. <laughs> All right, check this out. Genesis 1.26. All right, here we go. Thank you, Lucas. And God said, let us make men in our image... After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Evolution teaches that, that, that we are becoming uh, a superhuman. The Bible tells us that God created us already in the top of the chain. Amen to that. There is no getting better. There is no sin is the one that messed everything up. Sin is the one that degraded us. Sin is the one that made us get sick. Sin is the one that degraded our, our thoughts. Sin is the, the, the one that degraded our DNA. But in the beginning, God says, let them have dominion over everything. God made us as a Superman. In that context, okay? Don't get me wrong and, and think that I'm going crazy with that okay we are made we are the crown of creation we were made to rule over everything and god put us in charge of it and the animals are supposed to be in subjection to us but evolution says that we are animals that we are subjected to some kind of processes and that's the only way that we're going to get better christianity gives us a better hope amen go to genesis 128 Man. Genesis 128. <clears throat> Got it? And it says, And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So who was made to have dominion? Who was made to be in charge of the earth? It was us. It wasn't an evolution process. It was made on purpose. We were created in the image of God so that we can rule the same way that God rules with love, with compassion, with kindness, and with relationship. Amen. All right, so now let's answer the question of why. And this is the main thing. Now now that we can put evolution to the side, now that we can decipher that this is just junk, it's trash, it doesn't work, it's violent, it's corrupt, it's chaotic, and, and, and it brings death, okay? Why did God create? I'm going to let you ponder upon that a little bit. Why did God create? Create? And I know everybody has a, an idea. Everybody has a, a thought about it. But I want to bring it to the Bible. What did, Why did God create? Nehemiah 9.6. Nehemiah 9.6. Give you a few seconds to look for that. Yeah. Nehemiah. <laughs> And it says, 
Though heaven thou art Lord alone. Thou, I'm sorry. Thou, even thou art, art Lord alone. Thou hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their host, the earth and all things that are therein, the seas and all that is in therein. And thou preservest them all, and the host of heaven worshipeth what? It worshipeth him. Okay? The first reason why we were created, it was to give worship to God. Now, I'm sure that evolutionists, I'm sure that atheists are going to twist this. And they're going to say, oh, he's just an egomaniac God that wants worship and he wants to be uplifted and, and wants to be uh, 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 feel conceited and he wants people to, to bow down to him and all that, right? No. Yes, there is the aspect of us worshiping God with our actions and with our words. But just the fact that we were created in and of itself worship is God because it was his creation. Let me elaborate with a few more a few more verses. Colossians 1, 16 to 17. Colossians 1, 16 to 17. And it says, For by him were all things created, that are in heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. We don't just worship God by speaking it and by our actions and by our thoughts. We worship God because we are alive. Let me put it a different way. When God, If you go back into Genesis, when God created, the last thing that he created was us. It was a hu humanity. Okay, It was human beings. What did God create humans out of? Dust of the ground. The dust of the ground. Is there any value in the dust of the ground? No. Did you know that in the beginning, if you go back to Genesis, and I believe it's in, in chapter 2, when he's giving the description of creation, when he's giving the names of the lakes, of, of the rivers, there, there's a verse that mentions that there were there was beautiful gems and gold, and LNG White uh, uh, Coloric uh, 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 approves this, or not approves it, but, but uh, uh, supports this. She supports this, that there was gold right in the ground. You didn't have to dig. There was diamonds everywhere. There was gold everywhere. There were uh, jewels. There was all kinds of precious stones everywhere. You just had to walk around and you could just grab it. God did not make us out of that. He made us out of the, the lowliest of lowliest, the one that has no value. And from that, he made the crown of creation. That in itself gives glory to God. The angels are looking and saying, how did you do that from dirt, from something that has absolutely nothing worthless? You created the crown of creation. Mm. Our life is glory to God's work. Let me give you another verse for that. Hold on. Romans 11.36. Watch this. And I'm running out of time, so I'm going to go a little faster now. Romans 11.36. For of him... And through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. All things were created for him, by him, and to give glory to him. Not in a conceited way, but because just like we give glory to Picasso when he paints something and he says, Wow, you did that? Wow, that's good. That's really good. The painting itself is not it. Is the work that it took, us, us being alive, animals, creation, the world, the universe, how it was created, un, in and of itself gives glory to God. And all we can say is, Lord, you did that? You created this? You made the universe with all its rules and the sun and the stars? You made that? I don't have to say anything. Just the works itself gives you glory. Does that make sense? Amen to that. God is good. Everything was made first to worship God. 
the singularity, and if you go to the first presentation, you will know what I mean by the singularity. I, I talked what the singularity was about. Uh, go back to the Pasadena website and look for this, the first presentation, and you'll understand what, what, this, what this means, uh, the singularity. And uh, to give him glory. So everything was to worship and to give him glory. We talked about uh, not just it in, in and of itself, that it was created it was beautiful but look what psalms 105 uh, 1 through 5 says all give thanks unto the lord call upon his name make known his deeds among the people sing unto him sing psalms unto him talk ye of all his wonderful works this is what jesus is talking about he created everything talk about what he did glory ye in his holy name let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he had done. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. His works of creation. His works of love. Everything that he has created. Look at it and rejoice and say, wow, you did that? incredible and you rejoice and you rest and you say thank you thank you lord for your wonderful works Man. why does creation glorify him why do we glorify him revelation 1 5 to 6 and from jesus christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Not only do we physically see creation and we can glorify, but then we fell. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. In the beginning, God gave us life. Satan comes in, brings in sin, and it causes us death. But guess what? According to this, God will bring life again. And he will wash us away. And he puts us back where he put us right in the beginning. The way that he meant us to be. And, and because he loved us, he was able to die on the cross and through his blood, which is in itself, again, another wonderful thing to glorify God for. His sprinkling of the blood in our lives washes us away from our sins. How can we not give glory to that? Mm -hmm. Just a thought. Just ponder upon that. How can we not give glory for that? He built us the first time perfectly. We fall, and he could easily have said, let's just do it again. Get rid of him. But no, what does he say? No, we're going to redeem them. I'm going to go down there. I'm going to take their spot. I'm going to wash them with my, with my blood. I'm going to give them my righteousness, and I'm going to take their unrighteousness. I'm going to take the penalty. I'm going to die, and I'm going to allow them to live if they choose. This is how we glorify God. By consciously knowing what he did for us in the beginning and in the middle and what he's doing for us now and what he's going to do in the future when he comes back again and give us that perfect body again. It's an amazing thought. And, and we as Christians should not be dwelling with this trashy science that, that doesn't bring any hope but always dwell in the sight of God and on the cross and on the sacrifice and the works that he did for us. So why is evolution evil? The reason why evolution is evil, and there are people within our ranks in, in Christianity at large that believe some kind of variation of evolution and they mix it with the Bible, which is something that we just talked about cannot be done because it becomes a lie. The reason why evolution is evil it be, is because it tarnishes what God did for us. God created life. Evolution brings death. 
God brings order. Evolution brings chaos. God brings peace. Evolution brings war. I am better than you. I have to beat you. Every attribute of God is lost when you fall into the lie of evolution. And all hope is thrown out the window because there's nothing left. You go back right into the ground. Yeah, you'll have offsprings, but they're not going to remember you. And you're not going to remember them because you're dead. Where's the hope in that? So every attribute that God has did, his wonderful works that we were just talking about, they grab it and they trash it and they bring chaos. They bring death. They bring sorrow. They bring disease. And for them, this is how we get better. Impossible. I don't want to live in a world where we're continually fighting and dying and causing chaos so that we could potentially become better, but we never really do become better because we still have to become better and we have to kill more and we have to kill more and we have to kill more. God brings life. God is not a God of the dead. God is a God of the living. Satan is the God of death. And he has instilled this lie into the, to the world so that we lose hope in God and we lose sight of his wonderful works. Amen. And that's it. That is the Big Bang creation and God's glory. I hope that this made sense. I hope that it brought you closer to God. I hope that it brings you closer to the Bible. And more importantly, that you be careful what you listen to. And if you are going to listen to something, be very cautious on how it's presented to you. Because words can be manipulated. Their, their meaning can be changed. And this not only has to do with evolution. We could do that inside of the church where we can deconstruct the Bible to mean something that is not really there. And it still becomes a lie. And we might lose our salvation because of that lie. So please, God gives us a mind. God gives us wisdom. And the Bible says, if we ask, he will give us more wisdom because he is a God of wisdom. Okay. So ask before you, when you're presented with something, do not take it right away. Study it. Think about it. Compare it to the scriptures and take your time. Don't rush to these things because it is for your personal salvation. Amen. Uh, Sister Glenn, I am done. I don't know what we do from here now. <laughs> amen. Amen. Thank you so much for this presentation tonight on creation versus evolution. And now we're going to open up the floor for that might be comments or questions. <laughs> For you. So if anyone has any questions or comments, now is your time to ask Brother uh, David about whatever your concern is. Who yes, I, I do have a concern. This is Spencer. Um, hi, David. How you doing? Well, it's sure, my brother. Interesting topic. Uh, David, I have several questions for you. You can answer one or none or as many as you would like. All right, sure. Uh, one is you spoke about species and kind, and I understand uh, where you were going with that. But when I look at how man was made and what man was made for, and also I'm looking at his diet, we see that um, mankind or man uh, have um, is is now eating meat, which is not of his kind. And so we're seeing uh, man eating chicken and, you know, cows and things of that. And people say, well, you are what you eat in, that, in, in a sense of uh -huh. that nature. Right. So that is, I would think that would be considered something unnatural uh, or, or, or going out of its kind in, 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 in that respect. Right. Um, secondly, um, I'm looking at also um, the angels uh, when they look down upon the women. And they um, ended up having intercourse with them, uh, which um, uh, they uh, they were uh, giants uh, resulted from that mm -hmm. in the land. And I'm saying, well, that's not of its kind either. And we were I was always thought that angels did not have even uh, any any sexual organs. But it, it seemed that um, when we're reading, we're understanding that they did have um, intercourse with with uh, the women um uh, uh and, and, and it's kind in other words 
-hmm. Thirdly, um, I do understand science has also brought out the fact that uh, there were operations done uh, years ago where they um, uh, put a, a pig's heart into a human in order to, and then also there's other things that they've done as well, not just that one, bamboo as well, and uh, to be able, and we're, we're using um, um, things from the medicine, from the animal kingdom and other things of this nature um, to be able to, uh, for measles and flu shots and all that kind of stuff. We're using all these different uh, um, things that are not of humankind. And so I'm just wondering, because uh, I know you were talking evolution, we're talking mutation, you know, possible millions of years later and all that kind of stuff, which the earth is only 6,000 years old anyway. But <laughs> evolution considers it to be a lot older. So I'm just wondering, um, since we're looking at all these unnatural uh, way of, of how we're intermingling with nature, um, how that is not, or how, you know, we're looking at evolution saying this is evolving, but yet we're looking at ourselves and we're saying, They're well, de-evolving. we evolve. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we evolve as well because we don't look the same as we did as a baby, um, as, an, as, as an adult, or even as a, um, a older person. Uh, that is uh, at the end of life, so to speak. So I just wanted you to comment on that if you can. All right. Let me see if I remember <laughs> uh, the aspect of eating meat. Uh, so we do have to remember that eating meat was, like you said, it, it's not natural. In, in the beginning, God didn't, didn't bring meat into the plate because if he did, that means that in, death would have to been introduced and if there were death, then that means that God works through death, which contradicts the Bible. So that that's uh, uh, that's uh, an effect of sin, and 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 it's uh, the word that I want to use is it's a corruption of God's creation. We are, we weren't meant to to eat meat. Um, there's a uh, Walter Weiss. He has a, a presentation on on evolution, and he talks about T Rexes, and and one of the examples that uh, the evolution is used is that. Uh, that you know this huge big animals uh were meat eaters it turns out that walter Weith, he they they actually did some some research on this and they looked at the the t-rex's teeth um if you look at the t-rexes i don't remember how long they were i, I believe it was like six inches seven inches long they're 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 pretty big maybe the size of my head right these are big animals you have a problem if these big animals uh eat meat First of all, the shape of the head, the way that, it, that it's made, it doesn't have enough gums to uh, to hold those teeth. If an if a T Rex was to bite through skin and bones, you know what would happen? As soon as they tear away, you know what would happen to those teeth? They will fall off because they are too big and there's not enough cavity that holds it to the gum. So they, it, it can't possibly bite and then yank because it'll take all the teeth away. So one, one, one evidence. He also brought up the aspect that when they do get the teeth, you know what? It's inside the teeth, what the teeth are made of. Um, they're made out of, uh, oh, no, I just forgot the name. Uh, there's this uh, chlor chlorophyll. I think it's chlorophyll. They're made out of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll does not come from animals. It comes from plants. So they can't possibly be eating meat and have this chlorophylls in, 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 their, in their cavity, in their mouth. So, uh, and, and then the last one that, that I really like, when you look at a T-Rex, a T-Rex is supposed to be a hunter. To be able to hunt, he has to be fast. The problem is that they were fast, but they were too big. If you get a zebra and a, and a, and, and a and a T-Rex starts chasing a zebra, a zebra can turn. If you look how cheetahs, uh, 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 they chase che uh, uh, zebras down, the zebras can turn really fast. And then the cheetah has to kind of compensate and then they go around, but they, because the cheetah is, is faster, they can catch up. A T-Rex, because of its size, it could never catch its prey because the prey would be so fast and turn that the T-Rex will flip on itself trying to turn to catch the, the prey. It would be almost impossible for, a, uh, for, for that to happen. So you have all these things that 
scientists present to us, but again, they're all lies. It's according to their biases and according to their uh, uh, way of, 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 of thinking that the, the ideology is wrong. So yeah, when you, you were talking about us eating the meat and when you eat meat, yes, it combines with us, but it causes mutations. Mutations are never good. If you look at the research, every mutation that you see in life it's never a good thing. Mutations are what causes cancer. So when we eat meat, yes, we are mixing the DNA, but because we're mixing the DNA, it's messing us up. That's why we have colon cancer. That's why we have uh, uh, our immune system goes down. That's why it's, it starts messing with the book of the DNA and that mixing of DNA, that mixing of different kinds, it doesn't make it better. It actually makes it worse. I hope that one uh, was okay. Now, the interesting one, the Nephthalin. The Nephthalin is something that that uh, uh, a lot of Christianity uh, uh, preaches about. Uh, the word Nephthalin just means giants, just big people. And, and when it comes to that verse that you were talking about, uh, where am I? Uh, it's in Genesis, uh, I believe it's chapter 6 and verse 2. And it says, hold on, I got it here on um, mine. The sons of God saw that the daughters of man, that they were fair, and they took them wives, all which they chose. When you look at this, when, when it says the sons of God, is that talking about angels? And that I think that's the, the perception that a lot of Christianity has out there. These were not angels. This was just the, 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 the sons of God. They were the representatives of the worshipers of God. And they were the, 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 the representations of the sons of Cain. So if you look at the rest of the Bible and well, I, can you reread that? Because I think it said came. Did it say came down? The came. sons of the sons of God came down. No, that, the sons of God saw that the daughters oh, okay, of men that they were fair and they took them wives all which they chose. So they nobody came down. It was just the uh, the bad people mm -hmm. and the good people, and then they just started intermingling. Which again, God says, don't don't. Don't uh, don't get yourself involved with with somebody that's not equally yoked, and that's basically what they were doing in the in the, the main principle, the principle that is in in in, in those tests and in, in those verses before that. It says don't equally yoke with the other one. He said that right in the beginning. Don't mess with those people. Get away from them because if you do, then your daughters and your sons will start worshiping other gods and all that. And we know what happened in in uh, in Moses' time, and and those those principles were given throughout the whole Bible. Keep away from the worldliness. Keep away from the the, the sons of the world. You know, uh, keep keep your 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 livelihood under under the guidance of God. Okay, so th there was no angels. There's other verses. Hold on, I think I could find that one. That the the verse that says that angels can uh, can check your phone, David. I'm sorry. Check your cell phone. I tested you. Check myself. Say it again. Check your, check your cell phone. He sent you something. Oh, my phone, my phone, my phone. Oh, my cell phone. That's what you said. I thought you said check yourself. <laughs> so while you're looking at I'm that. I'm like, David, oh my goodness, I said something wrong. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah the, the sons of God and then the sons of men. That's just two groups. Still today, we have yeah. two groups, yeah. good and evil. That's all. It's not angels. Angels cannot reproduce. Um that that myth comes from the book of Enoch, and from uh from uh, pagan religions, from from Greeks and all that stuff. Okay, so I I got sent this. So the uh, Genesis six one to four is it's not saying angels mingle with women and produce giants. Uh, biblical proof: Jesus created the uh, creator declares that angels do not reproduce. Marriage, according to creation, was for mingling. Jesus emphatically declares that angels do not do this. Matthew 22, 30. That's the first right there. Uh, the sons of God refers to God's people. See Deuteronomy 14, 1. You are the sons of the Lord your God. Psalms 82, 6 clearly explains that the human judges are gods in the context of authority in this one i, I yeah the, the word means just authority or leaders uh from god but not in the context of nature as it states that they will die as men there's no biblical account of angels mingling with men yeah that's all that's all made up in this uh, uh, uh erroneous theology all right what was another one that you asked what was the, the other one um the um hearts 
transplant in the oh uh, yeah okay so yeah uh so um uh and and ariel just posted that too uh it is very very hard to mingle uh other animals with with heart uh if, if you really look at the data and if you look what those people have to go through uh even when it comes to uh, humans to humans we can transplant a liver to another human but the body can potentially reject it. And that's what they have to. I have patients at the pharmacy that take medication because the body rejects the implants and they have to put their medication so that the, the body doesn't go to overload, overload and attack that new thing that Joe just, just put there, whether it be a heart, whether it be a liver, whether it be an eye. Uh, so even with us, it, it is uh, it is strenuous to the body when something new is introduced. How much more if you put something that is not of its kind, the body it will react. You can get uh, you could get allergic reactions. You could get overload of 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 the immune system where it starts attacking not only the part but the rest of the body because he has no idea what's happening and he thinks everything is bad and you have to introduce all kinds of medications and shots and that could be a lifetime th uh, thing and usually you don't see this very often uh when you look at the papers how many people have pick hearts is it like oh we're gonna do this for everybody everybody can now get a pick heart because it doesn't work most of the time. It's very, actually very dangerous. It's always better to go with a human uh, uh, with its own kind. So uh, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's, uh, that's iffy. It, it's, 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 not, it's not safe. Yeah, the, the body will more likely reject it. If it doesn't do it now, it will do it later in the future. Uh, Brother David, um, Lucas has had his hand up for some- Oh, I'm sorry, Lucas. Go for it, my brother. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I can wait for. I don't know if there was another question left there, but I'll just ask mine. I don't okay. remember if there was another one. <laughs> okay. Spencer, uh, was there another one? No? Okay. Yeah, there was, but go okay. ahead, Lucas. I don't want to take up all the time, but go ahead. And I, I can ask it at the end if, if we have time. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Bruce Spencer. Yes. Uh, my, my comment or question is in regards to that of. Um, our view in, in Christianity, um, that being of, uh, the question was asked in the presentation, why did God create uh, mankind? And the answer being that is so that uh, uh, God would be worshipped. And, um, and there were some verses uh, to, to that that, uh, I, that you were presenting as of uh, uh, God being deserving of, of worship being that he created us being that uh, he died for us and uh, he saved us and um, I, I was thinking about that and, and I what, what came to my mind was uh, how worship um, is part of a relationship um, in, in this in the sense of a um, if, for example, I mean, what is most intimate in in, in a in a um, in a marriage is an interchange of uh, of something. So, in the interchange of of God and mankind, I think that mankind has they worship God, they approach God, and then they get into a deeper relationship. And um, it's a different perspective than that of uh, someone just plainly say, "Oh, God wants to be worshipped, so he's selfish." And I I, do, I think that by looking at it as in a relationship where maybe you can you can uh, dig deeper into this and and uh, and comment on on um, on the different view of because um, God in His Word He 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 even com He commands worship. So how do we uh, how do we explain that that God is altruistic and God is love in this at the same time that He uh, asks to be worshipped? And I think that by putting it in, in a way of a relationship that it, it, it comes together. Yeah. So uh, uh, I like that you brought the, word, the the aspect of God is love. If you go back to Genesis 1, the whole chapter of Genesis, let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. There was light and the darkness and the first day were created. And okay. Da, da, da. Well, okay. So if you look at Genesis chapter 1, every time that he creates something, he says, and the evening and the morning was such and such day. And it was good. <laughs> and it was good. 
So it, 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 it's not just that, again, it's not just the aspect of us uh, worshiping and bowing down physically and verbally, but the act that he does is an act of love. Creation is an act of love. He cannot do anything without love behind it because he, he doesn't have love. He is love. So everything he makes is good. It represents him. So when he creates, it's just an extension of him just being expressed in a different way. And it's always good. And in it of itself, it gives glory to God. Again, it's not because he's being selfish or because he the, he he requires that that he be uplifted and all that. And yeah, he does command. Uh, and the Bible says that he does command obedience and he does command uh, 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 reverence toward him and all that. But that comes out in the sense of na naturally. When he says command, it means that there's something wrong with us. When we don't naturally do something, then he has to exert his power and say, you have to do this. So I have to, I, 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 there's some, something is wrong with your DNA. Let's put it that with the book the, of information, something got taken away, something got corrupted, and you're not actually normally now. So now I have to teach you. Because we naturally don't obey. We naturally don't uh, keep the commandments. So that's why he has to say it in, in that sense. He has to teach us how to obey. He has to teach us because he has to bring us back to what it was, to, to what we were. But all of that encompasses love. All of that encompasses love. He doesn't want us to worship him just to worship him. He, he, he wants worship because it's good. Thank I hope that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we have another hand here from Brother Cliff. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, beautiful presentation. Amen. Uh, Praise the Lord. But I, I kind of lost you on your explanation. I think uh, his creation, he lets us teach ourselves. He shows us a path that is clean and, and, and to walk in. Uh, he sent his son to walk in that path to show mm -hmm. us the way. And uh, right. as we stray from that path, we stray from the goodness, the love, the art of love right. and everything else. So I think he kind of lets us see that uh, the truest path and the best path is his way, not our way. He, he yeah. lets us. He 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 lets us be victims of our choices. I I agree. I don't think we we are disagreeing in the mindset. Uh, the, no, the I just wanted to put the, it in, in in a way that uh, it just uh, kind of you know, I, your words, but just right. in a different way. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The the Bible says that the the Ten Commandments are our schoolmasters. So we are being taught, but we still have free will, and and yeah, we unfortunately we learn the hard way. <laughs> Yes. We learned the hard way, yeah. But he Amen. is teaching us. He is teaching us. We, we're learning, and he's teaching us how to be good. He's teaching us how to become like him again. And 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 that process is a process that takes a lot of love and patience. If not, he would have just like shoot off us like a long time ago. But the 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 perspective, the 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 principle of love, because he is love, he is kind. He has patience and he, and he is waiting to uh, waiting for us to make those reactions and learn from those mistakes that 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 we choose. And but eventually he says, yeah, I, I am good and I forgive, but I will not I will not forgive the guilty, the guilty. So there, there is a point where through these things that we're doing, this this presentations are teaching materials so that we yes. can choose God more. But even after we teach him, we have the, the ability to say, you know what? Yeah, it was a good presentation. Yeah, evolution. Okay, cool. But you know what? I, I'm going to stick to the world. And then God says, all right, I, it, it's your choice. I can't force you. And, and that in, of it, in it of itself is love, that he allows us to leave. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Amen. Thank you, though. I needed your wise words. <laughs> Amen. Yep. Yeah. Comments. We have about two more minutes. I just wanted to comment um, to about. No, the no, Mark is not allowed to speak. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, ahead, just, I just want to say I appreciate it that you brought this subject to our attention because I remember um, reading a quote. Um, I forget where it's found, but it's in the Spirit of Prophecy. She was talking about how. Um, you know, the, the scriptures could be, there was a, a someone mixing 
evolution with the scriptures. And then she was generally speaking about, you know, when it comes to the Sabbath, how many people have this view that it took generations, right, you know, right, right. Yeah. in the first and second day, you know, how the Bible says a day is as a thousand years and yeah. a thousand years is as one day. So, uh, you know, people had kind of shaped that into an evolutionary type of uh, principle when it's not. And so yeah. I see exactly what, what you're talking about. The same thing with, you know, when it comes to uh, comparing God, you know, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit to things that are created. There's actually a chapter, uh, it's called uh, Spiritualistic <laughs> Themes, and um, I forget the rest of it, but it, it's, it's, she says, um, it's something along the lines of where she says that uh, comparing comparing the Father and the sun as the dew and the and the sun in the morning uh and as the rain and i thought that that was really interesting uh, how she said that you know ministers should not do that because it's comparing something it's comparing the creator to the created basically and so i thought that that was a a really excellent point that kind of fits this narrative uh, that you're talking about and discussing mm. I just thought I might bring that out, but I'm I'm glad that you uh uh you know brought this topic up and and did some research on it because I know that uh it's it's kind of easy for the mind to drift off when we hear certain things come from the pulpit. And you're right, it's important to uh not just take you know everything at face value. It could even be you yourself and everybody that comes on this line and presents. You know, none of us, you know, are obligated to just take at face value when anyone says, but we have to challenge it mm -hmm. with the word of God, you know, um, and see, as as Paul says, whether these things be so. So, yeah, good, good presentation. Amen. You guys should watch the first one. The first one is more information that kind of opens the door for this one. So if there was some confusion that something you understand, it'll it'll make better sense if you look at the first presentation because it opens it up more uh, uh, onto that aspect of being deceived. And yeah, th there is one mindset in in, in Christianity, and I think it is uh, it, it it's caught on to Adventism too, where where uh, God used time. Again, there's a time word again. God use time to create things but it, it still goes to the same thing if god needed time and if god needed the stronger to survive then god is using chaos to create and that contradicts the bible that completely destroys everything he's using death to create life how can nothing create something and that's the the biggest uh, uh of, of reasoning that we should all put in our minds that evolution is believed that nothing created something but how can something so if god is using nothing which is death to create life then god is not really a god of life he's a god of death and i don't i don't i don't want to i don't want to subscribe to that <laughs> yeah, I, I was yeah. thinking too i remember hearing a sermon over at a certain church i won't say the church but it was a woman that that preached and she was saying that she believed the Lord revealed to her uh, how the Godhead works. And she and so she believed that she had a revelation from the Holy Spirit that said, wait a minute, you are a Trinity. You have your soul, your mind. And so I was thinking to myself, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> because, yeah, that's where the, the confusion starts coming in and all that. Yeah. Interesting. Right, stuff. The, the spiritualistic theories and things yeah. like that. Yeah. And so I was just saying to myself, here's the danger zone because... A lot of people that heard this ate it up, believed it, mm. did not, you know, go into actually searching it out for themselves whether these things were so. But, but that's exactly what you know that we're speaking about that we have to be on guard about and study right. to show ourselves through. I'd like to thank you all for your comments. We have one last uh, question. Mister's hand is up again. And then we're going to close out Amen. for tonight. Thank you so much. Um, David, um, There, someone texted me a question because I guess they were shy to, to actually say something. Okay. Um, I wanted to, um, in addition to their question, and I'll, you know, I'll, just, I'll just give you the question so you can answer or not answer again. Um, there's, the question is, I guess it's referring to, I'm not familiar with this, but it says, ask about the kids by a woman on YouTube that look like monkeys. 
Uh, I guess there was some type of um, um, maybe, I don't know, uh, intercourse or something with a monkey or, or a gorilla or a baboon. I don't know. But I guess they had a kid or something and it looked like a monkey or something. I don't know. I don't know anything about mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. But this asked, they said to ask the question. Mm-hmm. Secondly, um, the the fact that when God first created man, he created him to be immortal. Mm-hmm. And so after man's, man's um, fall, he became immortal. Mm-hmm. Um, would that Mortal. be considered? No, backwards. I'm sorry. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, y- you know what I'm talking about. Right, right. About. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, would that be considered? I mean, I would consider that to be a decline, or uh, would you consider that to be also a mutation in a sense that now we're no longer um, the same height as, as as Adam used to be, and and and, and our years have, have obviously diminished, and what have you? Would that be considered along a evolutional? I would call that devolution. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, whatever you know. Uh, and secondly, uh, you you asked the court. You you mentioned um, why uh, did God create mankind, or why did man? And then you gave a whole bunch of different scriptures that support that. And um, I, I I don't quote me on this, but I believe I read something in Spirit of Prophecy that alluded to the fact that um, when God created the world, that He wanted to um, make something that was as close to him as possible. And so um, he wanted uh, a relationship with some with with a with a with something that he could identify with. Um, he couldn't identify with the angels, but he wanted something to identify on a much closer level. And so when we're talking about why did God create, we you know, I go back to the well, you know, God gave us the ability to create children, so to speak, or offspring. Uh, we can ask the same question. Well, why did we decide to have kids? You know, and it's because obviously uh, we wanted to and, and, and we wanted to um, have a um, uh, something, a legacy or something we can leave to our, to our children. So I'm thinking the same way God wanted that relationship, because even after uh, when he says that he wants to come and dwell and live with man on earth uh, in the earth made new. So right. I'm thinking along those lines when uh, when you ask the question, why did God create man? In addition to your other answers, which I found to be true as well. well I, I, I will go with what Lucas says. Uh, the reason why God created and, and to be more precise, I like what Lucas says, is relationship. God is love and, and love needs to love. <laughs> So he created so that he can love, so that he can express it. The act of creation itself is an act of love. And then when the when the creation is made, he can love the creation. So it's it's a, it's a twofold uh, a, a sword, if you want to put it that way. So when like, that relation was severed, this one will, will answer what you were just talking about. And the, the question about the monkey, that, that, that sin just messed up the DNA. So now you're having us as human introducing all kinds of things that we're not you you brought up the aspect of of eating things that we were not supposed to be eating that starts messing up the dna so when the dna starts getting messed up then we get shorter we get sick faster we get asthma we get defects in the uh well not not just in the i I was just looking at some videos of uh it was called freaks in history or something like that. And they were talking about those uh, uh, circuses that they used to have back in the, in, in, like a hundred years ago. And they would put all these people that have uh, defects, like the, the biggest man in the world or the shortest man in the world or or a woman that had four legs or or the wolf man that he was all hairy and this and that. It's just uh, the DNA is getting, is getting altered. The DNA is getting messed up because of sin and because of our own actions. So it causes uh, genetic defects, it mutates. So the hair, like the wolf man, the hair, that hair is normal, but because the DNA is messed up, now it's growing excessive hair. You're having legs is normal, but because your DNA is wrong, it's, it's not it's not written correctly. It introduces itself as now you have four legs, but the, for the but there are two legs that are smaller than the other ones. You have uh, Siamese twins that they're 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 born stuck together. There's something wrong with the DNA, and and the 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 main cause of that was sin. The main cause of that was sin. So yeah, we can't say that oh just because 
this kid came out looking like a monkey that say, like, well, that proves that we came from monkey. No, it's a, it's a genetic defect. And there's names for all the stuff that I don't, uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce, <laughs> but, but they're all hyper genetical defects or, or mutations that, that have been caused through, through generational sin. Okay. I want to thank you so much tonight, brother David, and thank you each of you for your questions and your participation. And we look forward to meeting you again next week, the same time, the same place, and doing some of the same things. Hey, so Amen. Thank you, David. We're gonna that that? You want to fight? Oscar. What? Oscar. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome, my brother. Uh, shall we have a last word of prayer? Or? Yes. Would you please? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Let's uh, let's pray to close. Uh, pray to close. Lord and Heavenly Father, thank you very much because you have given us a book of life, a book that cannot be fought, a book that cannot be contended with, a book that is pure truth and is pure love. And, and, and it's a book that has been given to us. It's a gift. Just like, uh, just like salvation is a gift, this book is also a gift because it teaches us how to be what you want us to be. It teaches us, it leads us, it's a light into our feet, a light into our path. It, it guides us to perfection, it guides us, it corrects us, it, it leads us into the path of salvation and into heaven. Thank you very much, Lord, because the, Satan has uh, darkened this world with all kinds of lies. But we thank you because this word, this book that you have given us can destroy everything that the, that the, devil, the devil can muster. Your son himself... When he was tempted, use this wonderful book to counter the temptations of Satan. We are no different than that. We have the same ability. We have the same choice. We can go and dive into that word. We can memorize it. We can study it. We can make it our own so that when these things, these lies, these deceptions, this, uh, uh, these corruptions come in front of us, that we may look at that book and say, nope, that doesn't fly. That's not according to what the word of God says. I'm not buying it. So please, we ask at this moment, as this thing has been heard, um, I thank you very much for using me as a vessel. I am, I, I lack words. I am, I am weaker than any any of my friends that I know of. I get confused very easy. But you have chosen me to to do this. I pray that this was done correctly. That I was able to use the right words, and that I did not confuse anybody. And if I did, Lord, please forgive me. And allow my brothers and sisters that are here present or the ones that are going to be listening to this, that they may search for themselves in the scriptures so that they see that these things are lies. Please keep us safe, Lord. Let us have a good night. Thank you very much for the time you give us. Thank you for the technology. And thank you for all the questions that we may all grow together in the perfection of your word. We ask you this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good night, everyone. We look forward to seeing you next week. God thank you. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. <laughs>